one thing I should, um, and I'll send, I'll send uh, Brian some notes, but essentially this can be found on our uh, Weber Thompson website, and, and there's some really good information about this. Um, it's been talked a lot about, and actually developers have been calling the office actually talking about potentially developing something like it. Yeah. I'm just wondering, so um, <coughs> you would have almost no mechanical systems. Is this uh, is it the uh, connected to the like the would it be connected to a city water grid so you get fresh water in or does it supply its own? I think that you would probably have to. I think that that's one thing that you know during the summertime when you don't get enough rain. Um, Seattle's a unique unique area that where we do get a lot of rain and that's a blessing in disguise sometimes. Um, so, uh, I, but I can see wanting you know fresh water to, as opposed to. Because you have a lake nearby you can suck from. <laughs> yeah. And is this connected to the passive house um, work on passive house? It's well? not. It's not, but uh, it's very similar. The, the ideas are very similar. Yeah, the passive house. I don't know. Did anybody? That's, that's the one net zero. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody visited that. It was up in Greenwood. <laughs> uh, there's a, a gentleman. Did you have been? Yeah. yeah, there's a gentleman that actually has, through all of his own
design right now in Washington or in you know, this zone, um, you're required to be the size of the three lines. You'd be surprised with those systems. You'd be surprised with those sustain the beam design. So I'll just, I'll just wrap up. Um, I guess, so then there's, I guess the last one is net positive, where you're actually getting back to uh, getting back to utilities. I don't have an example of that. Um, and maybe there is one, but I just didn't have time to look for it. But so, all right, so why, um, so why is the energy code and, and lead uh, important for architecture as an um, So in the city of Seattle, um, basically almost every apartment building that we're designing is the lead, lead apartment building. And there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, one of them is uh, there's a, something through the city of Seattle called Priority Green. And Priority Green basically gives you a pass, not a pass, but a, a pass to move faster through the permitting process. So the plans reviewers that are reviewing the permit documents actually are are going and looking at your documents before you're looking at somebody else's that is not going to leave. Really interesting concept. Um, um, it, it does it does shave time. However, it's um, but it's getting to the point where a lot of people are going to leave. And there's and there's another reason for doing lead and um, you know that it's just Purely marketability. Um, apartment people that are leasing apartments are saying, or the gold, the you know, silver, um, your utilities are going to be cheaper. Um, it's going to be a healthier space to live in. Um, and then you know there's apartments, but then there's also Class A office spaces. And I mean, a great example is you know our our office our office building. Even when we went from 100 people down to 25, 30, you know, we had the we were on three floors of that office building in 2009. Downturn and immediately rented it back up. 100% rent the entire time. It's, it's been a big construction. So that's that's a really big thing for developers is they're able to say this is class A. Um, and then they're also they're finding that through studies that there's a low turnover rate for people that are renting uh, or leasing spaces. They, they once they're in it, they, they have to have. So um, and then ultimately, you know, it's it's just good for our health um, and it helps sustain our planet, which is pretty important. Yeah. Um, how did the city? Uh, how does the city handle buildings that might be lead as far as construction goes, but then the people who live there or work there turn off some of the things that are supposed to be part of it? they still consider it compliant or some weird gray area? That's a gray area. I mean, supposedly you're supposed to, you know, a lot of the things are integrated into the building, but I, I see what you're saying. When you're going through the permit process, you can say that this is going to be a lead project. Right. And then you get through to VE, value engineering, where the owner says that's too expensive and you start cutting stuff. Um, and you can say, okay, we can't do it. So that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I, I don't actually like to know that. But there's, um, you know, in terms of that, there's a good balance. I was sitting in a meeting with our current owner on this project. Um, we were going through our lead checklist of all the things that we were going to do. And basically, the owner was saying, okay, we are going for lead silver, and we need you know, X points, we need 35 points. And we currently are showing that we have Y45 points. Okay, so we have a surplus of points. Where can I take something out and make money back and still make that lead silver? So basically, though, go from you know their surplus of 10 points down to five, you always want to leave a bubble. But basically say, okay, well, all right, do I really need this? Do I really need this? So there's really 
some there's an interesting balance of cost for lead and, and getting. Those are the, those are the realities. <laughs> so this is all this is all uh, driven by cash by corporations and stuff like that. Uh, what business and stuff like that. Uh, what about just community?
they don't know what they're doing with the information yet, which is kind of interesting. But they're they're basically they're they're getting all this information, and um, I think there's there's ways to use it, but I don't know if they have the funding to. to that, that's required now from all all building owners, right? And then if you tell them, they don't report annually. Any of that, like that um. I mean, CBACS is, is three to five years. They, they do their survey. So mm -hmm. annually, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I, I'd be interested in. Yeah, that, that ordinance just went into effect last time. Last like fall. Okay. Yeah. How do you spell CBAC? It's um, CBAC is C B E C S. And that's Commercial Building Energy Consumption.
Hale is the gentleman that I've been working with on our energy code stuff. And he's, the guy's always, he, he knows that thing left and right. So, um, rushing is good. Uh, Patrick Hayes is an engineer. I'd say Russian is a good person. And I'll talk to him if he's just going to push. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, at your firm and, and maybe some of the other architectural firms around, um, do you guys still generate physical models? And who is responsible for that in the firm? Good question. Um, <coughs> we, it depends. It depends on the firm. It depends on the size of the project. Typically, what we'll do is actually um, build a The reason for that is uh, you can use the model from the very beginning, where we, you, know, you have to go through design review process with the city. Um, you've got an initial meeting, which is an EBG, where they just want to see passing. And then the follow meeting is a recommendation meeting to the design review board. And the, you can basically start with this model, which is massing, and then take it to the next level, which then you show for your design review. Um, they still do make um, hand models, or, um, but there's a, um, a lighting, a lot of lighting consultants will actually build an interior models. And, uh, there's actually a really, really good program through the University of Washington um, where they have a lighting um, studio, basically, a lighting laboratory, where they do all kinds of studies. get out there 